I would like to start by wishing each of you a very Merry Christmas. I am Kelly Armbruster, a financial associate with Thrivent. We are proud to sponsor these adorable crafts that ArtReach has created for our community. Whether you are making this craft for yourself, family, friends, or paying it forward to a stranger, I hope it leaves you with a smile. Once you have finished with your kit, be sure to watch Thrivent's 30 second video. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Hi friends, Amy Powell here, Executive Director of ArtReach. And um, this week we are bringing you a gingerbread Christmas house for the uh, weekly take and make craft. We of course want to thank our sponsors for helping us to uh, bring these into your home. And we hope that when you um, if you have your products finished that you will certainly share your pictures on Facebook as long as they're not a gift for someone uh, and tag ArtReach and uh, help us to support our sponsors by um, dropping a quick thank you. This uh, holiday season the crafts are sponsored by Thrivent Financial and uh, because of their generosity we've been able to um, make this a uh, wonderful take and make craft season. So. Um, this, what I have done is I have pre-painted, uh, the parts for the gingerbread house so that way the paint could dry. And you'll see that on each of the sections, they have little, um, openings, little slits, and then little bottom pieces here. And so eventually what's going to happen is these are going to go inside of the pieces. They're all going to kind of interlock together. So when you are painting, you're going to, um, pay special attention that you don't get paint on the inside of these openings and that you don't put a heavy coat of paint on these little notches on the bottom um, because they really are a close fit and so if you get too much paint on them or if you get paint inside these grooves then um, it's going to make it kind of difficult to put the pieces together uh, so in your kit you should have everything that you need uh, with the exception of a paintbrush uh, and some glue and if you don't have any paint brushes at home you can use uh, q-tips just standard household q-tips so I'm going to um, finish painting this last piece so you can see uh, what I do to kind of protect the edges and the the little middle pieces there so I've got some paper down here because I want to protect my uh, table so I'm just gonna load up my uh, q-tip here with some paint and you see that I've already started this one. So I'm just gonna take my Q-tip and I'm just gonna smear it all over. Um, you have to reload frequently when you're using the Q-tips, but um, I just kind of go in circles when I'm getting close to the edges with these scalloped pieces. And then when I'm working around these pieces right here, I'm gonna go nice and slow so that way I can get right up next to them without getting a bunch of paint globbed on the inside of them. Uh, because like I said, we don't want to end up with paint filling uh, those sections because then it's gonna make it really, really difficult for you to snap them together. So I'm gonna load up my Q-tip here again. I'm just gonna keep painting. And um, I did not paint the base uh, this is our base right here uh, the the kit comes in a number of different pieces here and I did not uh, choose to paint the base because most of it is actually going to be on the inside of the gingerbread house now if you'd like to ch um, use you know the, your extra brown paint and paint the base too you certainly can do that I would make sure that you paint the outside of the gingerbread house first so first I'm using my my brown paint and that's what I'm using to paint the outside of the gingerbread house uh, and then I'll use the little cup of white um, to make the scallops and to kind of embellish along the roof lines. I'm going to finish getting this all painted up real quick. Again, being very careful around the edges of those little notches so that way we can keep those uh, intact without filling them with paint because we do not want to fill them with paint. The nice thing about putting the paint on with a Q-tip is that it kind of works like a stain. So stain sometimes is a little different than a paint because it actually, um, you know, still shows the grain of the wood. So, um, you know, when you're using a paintbrush, it goes on a little bit thicker. 
and um, this is acrylic paint so if you're worried about your clothes or your table you know your workspace that you're working on make sure that you're wearing an apron and that you are using a protective layer on the bottom so that way you're not getting uh, paint on your table and you only need to do one side and uh, of each of these wooden pieces because the other sides are all going to be on the inside so you only need to do the outside now if you have some other acrylic paints at home and you want to you know embellish your gingerbread house with paint before you put it together you're certainly welcome to do that as well we wanted to give you the supplies that were kind of uniform and give everybody the opportunity to have a really cute gingerbread house um, and make it um, you know without giving too many options for things that people might not use so we stuck with the the two basics of the brown for the gingerbread house and the white for um you know adding some snow and maybe adding some embellishments along your rooftop so um i'm going to set this last roof piece aside since it's still drying and i've got some elmer's glue here so you can use the elmer's glue to help keep the pieces together once you start assembling them into your base and you see the base has the long side has two notch holes and each of the shorts um, has one notch hole so to use the um, this is gonna take a little bit of um, maybe a couple adult hands to help with this so I'm just gonna put a little dab of glue here I'm gonna put it on the inside so I'm gonna use one of the side walls here and the side walls are the ones with the windows and um, so I'm going to put a little bit of Elmer's glue, maybe, on the inside of this side wall here. And that'll just help it um, stay in place once everything is put together. I'm going to, um, I'm just going to do all the little notches on the house pieces right now. So I've got the two side walls you see one has the little crisscross in the window pane and one is open and then uh these are the um the other two the two long walls and so i'm going to just put some i'm just putting the glue on the inside the unpainted side on these little notches right here you can see i put some glue there just a light coating And then the ones with the scalloped edges, those are um, the roof pieces. And like I said, these pieces fit, um, they're, they are very um, tight fitting pieces. So you're gonna, you may need a, a couple times of kind of jiggling things around to get everything to fit together. So now I'm just doing all the extra little notches on these side, how, um, the side panes as well. Okay, so now I've got the glue on all my parts and pieces. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put the put the walls together first. And then once I have the walls together, then I will slide it um, into the base. So I'm just going to start putting the, the walls together. And this may take a, a couple of extra hands. Um, so you put the side walls on, just sliding them into the notches the notches into the little openings and um, when you're putting it together just be careful oh I'm gonna do that one upside down um, just be careful that you are um, not pushing too hard that you're kind of doing it gently because this is just balsa wood and we don't want it to crack or um, you know the sides to split apart okay so now I have my four walls together and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put it upside down it'll kind of stand on the the peaks there and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to kind of go like this and I'm gonna line up the the notches of the base to get it to kind of go into each of the little openings. And then I'm just gonna carefully work it in place. Again, this is balsa wood, so you need to 
treat it with a little bit of care. Okay, so I've pushed all of the side walls together and I have the, the bottom in place. The glue is um, all on the inside. So you just wanna make sure that all the walls are pushed together. If you need to put a little more glue in place on the inside, once you've got things in place, you can. Just take your, your Elmer's glue if you, uh, if you need to, to just push a little bit on the inside of that to make sure everything holds in place. I wanna make sure that it's nice and uh, sturdy. I'm just putting a little bit of extra Elmer's glue at all of the little seams across the bottom and across the sides and in the little corners here. Okay, then I'm going to take my roof pieces. Now, my roof, my one roof piece that I just finished, you can see it's kind of shiny, so it's not dry all the way. So I'm just going to be real careful. Um, I'm going to put some glue. So now I'm not going to be able to get anything else on the inside. So if you wanted to use this opportunity to, you know, maybe if you've got some little figurines and you want to glue them in the bottom there, you could do that. So that way when you look in the windows, there's things inside. When you look in the door, um... Uh, if you don't want to, that's fine too, though. You've got an adorable little uh, uh, gingerbread house here. So, um, but this is the last step before you put anything um, on, you know, the, on the inside. So I'm going to put another coat of glue here. And I'm just going to put some glue on these notches on the inside too. So on these two little points that are sticking up right here on each end. I'm just gonna put some glue on the inside of them. So that way as I set the roof in place, it'll have some glue to help hold it. And the glue is basically just gonna make it, um, make it sturdy. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my roof together. So the roof has these two little notches and then this other section um, has those two little holes. So I'm just gonna put the two roof pieces together and like I said mine is still wet so I'm gonna get some glue on my fingers here um, or I'm gonna get some paint on my fingers so I'm just gonna push these little guys together like so and you hear that there's a little bit of crunching so I just was careful as I was pushing it so that way uh, the crunching didn't result in um, any anything cracking so now that I've got my two roof pieces together I'm gonna line them up with the with the notches on the outside carefully again because you want um, you want to make sure that you know things aren't getting cracked as you're trying to push them into place it it does take a little bit of um, of patience as you're putting this together Kind of got to work it in, in sections. Just put it on, try and shimmy it down, put it on, try and shimmy it down. Kind of hard to do with wet paint. So you're really going to want to give it a, a good time to dry. Give it a good uh, good coat of paint and let it dry before you start putting it together. Because otherwise you're going to end up with uh, paint all over your fingers. Um. After you're done painting too don't throw away your brown uh, because you may want to add a little touch up on the outside once you've got all the pieces in place too so um, so don't throw away your brown paint that you've got okay so now I have all the pieces in place and um, my uh, Elmer's glue will dry 
and if I if I want to I can take my little um, my little brush here and I can go through and I can you know touch up some of these things like on the roof if I decide I want it all to be brown I can just go along and make that brown You want to leave it white or balsa colored you can leave it white too that's the nice thing about these projects is that each one can be uh, unique and no two need to be exactly alike if you want to touch up these little notches here on the roof you can certainly do that as well you'll see on the you know the insides there's some uh, spots if you want to touch those up you can uh, so now I've got my white paint here, and I've also got some um, felt balls and some pipe cleaners. So I've got uh, the different kind, the different colored uh, balls here, and those can serve as like little ornaments. And then I've got pipe cleaners, so I can use the pipe cleaners to uh, line the roof. I can make little flowers out of them. I can make little tiny candy canes. And you're gonna to wanna to use your Elmer's glue uh, to hold all of those things in place. So I'm gonna add some scallops onto my roof because uh, I like scallops. And you see the edges uh, of your roof are kind of scalloped. So I'm going to add the scallops onto this side because this is the side that's dry already. So I've just loaded my Q-tip with some white and I'm just gonna start and I'm just gonna add some scallops like it would look like there was snow that was piled on the top of the roof. You know, scallops are kind of like, um, you know, the wings of birds as you are, you know, learning to draw a seagull. And if you want to draw them out first with a pencil, so that way you have, you know, consistency, consistency you can. So there's my scallops. I also might decide that I wanna add a little snow drift on the front of the house. Well, I'm gonna say this is the front of the house. So I'm gonna add a little snow drift here. I'm gonna just add some white, kind of make it look like the snow has drifted up the side of the house there. It's a windy day, blustery outside, and so I'm gonna add some little snow drifts to make it look like the snow is piled up on the side of the house like that. And then, on my side that I did my scallops, I'm gonna put a couple dabs of glue, and I'm gonna make some uh, ornaments here. So I'm just gonna put a couple dabs of glue in each of the scallops. I'm gonna put my little colorful balls here. Whatever order you want. I'm gonna use all the same size for up here. And there's my little balls. Um, to make it oh oh goodness so you gotta wait before you gotta wait before you move it because otherwise they'll just hop right off there I might not have put enough glue on I did put just a little dab so oh my goodness all the little ornaments are falling off so you need to make sure that you use enough glue you we're gonna give you a little more glue to uh, to keep them in place if you have a problem with them all sliding off you could do this in segments and kind of set this on its side like this, prop it up so that way, um, might need to prop it up a little bit, put something else underneath it. So, you know, if you're working on it and you wanna make sure that the little bulbs uh, don't slide off, I used my bottle of Elmer's glue here and I kind of propped it up. Um, I don't have a pair of scissors here, but, uh, I could take this little red and white uh, pipe cleaner and make it into a little candy cane. And then I can snip it off and I can glue that along the bottom as well. You got a nice long pipe cleaner here so you could do lots of candy canes. Um, you could also use these to uh, trim the edges. So if you wanted to make it look like there were lights, you could glue them along the uh, edges here of your gingerbread house. The pipe cleaners are pliable and you should be able to cut them with a uh, pair of household scissors. 
And then when you're done with your piece, make sure that you use a Sharpie or a magic marker and uh, write your name and the year that you made it. And hopefully you've had a fun time making your craft and you'll have something that you can either keep for yourself for years to come or you can give away as a Christmas gift this year. We'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us. All right, so I added some final embellishments to my gingerbread house, and I thought I'd give you a video here to see what the what the final product looked like. So what I learned is that in order to get these cute little gumdrops to stay on the top is that you kind of have to put it on its side and rest something underneath the roof so that way the, the roof is um, parallel to your table. And when you do that, then the gum drops will, the glue will dry and the gum drops will stay in place. So here's one side of my gingerbread house. I made some snow drifts to look like it had drifted up against the side of the house. And I used my extra white and I painted the entire surface around the outside of the gingerbread house here white so that way it looked like there was snow on the ground. Um, this is one of the sides of my gingerbread house. So I used my pipe cleaners and I lined the roof and I lined the floor and I put some cute little candy canes there with some gumdrops above the door or excuse me above the window and uh, I did the same thing on this side of the roof where I added some gumdrops and some scallops added some more snow drifts on the bottom and then here on the front of the house we've got um, again some pipe cleaners to line the roof and to line the floor and some cute little candy canes there and some gumdrops above the door so there is my finished product and what you're this is going to take a little bit of time and patience as the glue sets up so make sure that you give yourself plenty of time to put the glue in place let the gumdrops dry let the pipe cleaners uh, dry in place before you move it and go on to the next side thanks again for joining us there's interest you accrue and interest you pursue Plans for the long term. And plans for a long weekend. Assets you allocate. And ones you hold tight. At Thrivin, we believe money is a tool, not a goal. And with the right guidance, you can get the financial clarity you need and live a life rich in meaning and gratitude. Talk to a Thrivent financial professional or visit Thrivent.com to learn more.